Welcome to Lambda Expressions Lecture. So Lambda is called an anonymous function, meaning it does not require a def name, nor does it require a return. Lambdas are single line expressions and can only be used as a substitute for basic functions. Also, you cannot add a doc string to a Lambda unless you can with a function. So starting off, we'll do a very basic function and then we'll go about converting it into a lambda. So def adds arg1, arg2, and as you can probably guess, it's just gonna be an addition. So arg1 plus arg2, and then we'll run our function at say 10 and 20 with the output of 30. So if we're gonna go about converting this into a lambda, then what we do is let's say x y colon x plus y, and then we do g ten twenty. And as you can see here, we have the exact same output. And you'll notice if you compare both the function, the add function, and the lambda function, you'll find that you have x and y as the parameters on the left hand side of the colon and then on the right hand side you actually have of course the task that's being performed by the lambda function just as you have with the line here the second line where return arg1 plus arg2 in the add function and what we can also do is add more variables or rather these parameters here so x y z and then we could do z and we can have, let's say, 100. So we'll get 130 as the output. And we could also create some of them as, or all of them, uh, as having default values. So we could do 10, 40, and let's say 50. Then we remove all of these, and we get 100. So we don't actually have to put any values in because we've already got default values. However, we can actually override these values here, just like we could with the add function. So I could actually do the same here, 10, 40, and arg3 equals 50. So of course I'd have to put in arg3 and also if we just remove that, get 100 as well, just like we have the lambda g function. But we could override these default values. So if we do, let's say, 200, 400, and let's say 12, we're going to get 612. There you go. Great. Okay, so moving on from that, we'll do a few more. So essentially in this lecture, we're going to be going about converting functions into lambda. So let's say we do... Oops, def check num, so we've got one parameter, return num modulus 2 equal equal 0, or num greater than 8. And then we do check, let's say we'll do 8. It's true because it's an even number. So either, well, in this line here, the return line, line 2, we're looking for either an even number or a number greater than 8, which will return a Boolean value of true. If not, it will return a Boolean value of false. So let's say we do 4. This will also be true because it's a Boolean value of, uh, get a Boolean value of true, but it's an even number. So it's going to be true. If we were to do 3, however, we're going to get false because it is less than 8 and it's not an even number. If we were, however, to do an e an odd number of 13 it is not even but it is greater than 8 so we also get true okay so how are we going to go about doing this for lambda well all we do is num colon so we've got our parameter here and then we do num or num greater than 8 so it's extremely similar to this basic check function and then it would be g2 13 we get true changes to 3 we get false changes to 9 
we get true changes to four we get true okay great so moving on from that if we were to also do type and say we do check we get function and likewise if we were to do g2 we also get function so scrolling down just leave some space here let's say we do a def compare so we're going to have control flow with this function with two variables do colon if a greater than 10 return a else return b we'll do compare let's say do 4 and 2 we're going to get the output of 2 because a is not greater than 10 because in this case a is 4 so we're going to get the output of 2 which is the parameter b and let's say for instance we put this as 20 we're going to get the output of a instead which is going to be 20 okay so how will we create the equivalent with lambda for this compare function well what we do is to say g3 and then we have lambda a b remember these are the parameters on the left hand side of the colon and then we do a if a greater than 10 else b and then we'll do g3 20 to exactly as we have with the compare and then we have 20 if we were to do let's say 7 we get 2 okay so moving on from that we'll do one more and that is def size x so we have the x as the parameter if x greater than 100 colon return big else return small and then we'll do size let's say we do 90 should be small and if we do let's say whoops just 101 this should be big and if we want to go about creating the equivalent version of this with lambda we'll actually do it on another cell so it's a bit more clearer it's g4 equals lambda x as our variable or parameter rather big let's make this caps big if x greater than 100 else small g4 101 should be big and if we do 90 it's small if we do let's just say one we also get small we do a thousand we get big okay and really that's pretty much all there is to this lecture uh, if you have any more questions then feel free to ask in the q a thank you welcome to try accept and finally lecture so python will output different types of error notifications these include type error name error attribute error indentation error and syntax error as well as many others that i'm sure you've come across during your time learning python Python allows us to manage the output error instead of relying on the default output of Python. This is where the try, accept, and finally clauses come in. These clauses can prevent errors from being fatal to your code. So if we just try a very common example here of, say, an integer plus a string, and say we have a string of a number, 90, instead of getting 100 as the output, we're going to get what's called a type error where we can't add an integer with a string, of course. Let's say we also have a for loop. So for i in range pre colon print i, and if we run this, we're still going to have the error. So let's say we want to have the output of the for loop, but we still want it within the same cell in spite of this incorrect code here on line one. Well, what we can do is put the try clause here for colon, and likewise we're going to do accept clause with colon and then just put the print in the correct indentation and then we run this 
as you can see, we have the output of 0, 1, and 2 for the accept clause. Great. Let's say we also put in the finally clause. We'll do print end code. We'll also put a print around the 10 plus the string of 90. And now you have the output of the end code. So what's happening is that even though the try code is invalid, the accept code or accept clause will have its code output and finally will always run regardless of whether the try or the accept is valid code. So even if both of them are invalid, the finally will always output code. So let's say for instance we make an error here as well with the accepts. We're going to get a type error and there we go, a type error. But as you can see the output of the print statement for the finally clause and code will always run regardless of whether or not either one or both of them are true. So let's say we make this true. So even though the accept is not valid code, it's still ignored because the try clause is valid code. And if we were to put this as free, it's still the try clause. So think of it this way. The try acceptor finally are somewhat equivalent to control flow of if, elif, and else. So the try you can think of as if, the accept you can think of as elif, and the finally you can think of as else. Now, the exception, of course, is that finally will always run regardless. It's not a default argument where the others have to be false. And the accept, you can actually have multiple exceptions within, in between both the finally and the try clauses, similar to the elif with the control flow. So moving on from that, let's say, for instance, um, we do a function, we'll call it error, we'll do var as the parameter, and then we'll do a try clause, and let's say we do return 10 plus var, and we'll do accept, we'll do pr two prints within the accept clause type error found and then print string in caps plus we'll do string 10 plus var actually we'll do that so string here plus var yeah that's correct in the parentheses and then we'll do finally as the just end code clause and then we'll run our function let's say we put in 20 and we get end code 30 so we have the try clause and the finally clause running and the accept is ignored however if we were to put in let's say let's say we put in hello instead well we get the accept clause and the finally clause running instead so what's happening is that if we were to get rid of this string here, this str, which converts the integer into a string, then the accept won't work either. As you can see here, type error found and code, but we still have an error type code, type error for the code here. Okay, so moving on from that, let's put this back as a string. And what we can also do is another function we'll call it divide def divide and we'll have x and y as the two parameters and then we'll do our first clause try as always res equals x divided by y and actually we'll keep that just below it return res and then we'll do multiple exceptions, so accept zero division error. And this is one of the names of the errors. So remember we had type error, name error, syntax error, and so on. So we can actually give the name of the error and Python will pick it out. So say for instance, we do print division by zero 
is forbidden. Oh, keep that, yeah. And then we'll do one more. Let's say type error, which we've seen before, of course. Print divide by a, let's say, can't be divided, can't be divided or divide by a string. And then we'll do finally print executing finally clause. And then we'll have the function run. So we have 10 divided by 2. And we get, of course, 5.0 executing finally clause. So the try and the finally are valid. If we were to do 0, well, we're not going to get the type error. We're going to get the zero division error. So as you can see here, division by zero is forbidden. So that's what's happening when you put the name here. It catches the exact error that you're actually getting. And if we were to do, let's say, hello, run this. Now you have the type error. It can't be divided or divided by a string. And we can actually do the same here as well. We still have the type error. Okay. And that concludes the two functions. So we move on from that. We can also do a while loop with the different clauses. So we have the clauses within a while loop and we'll do x equals int input enter a valid integer break then we'll do accept print invalid inputs okay so if I were to put in something random like that then the while loop still continues with the inputs. So it's asking for a valid input. In this case, we're going to have to put in, let's say, an integer 9, and it stops. So because it's valid, this code then breaks. And if we were to run this again, let's say we put in the floats, it's not valid because we need to put in an integer because there's an int here. So we put in, say, 12, it stops. If I were to remove the int, now I can actually put in a float. Whoops. There you go, and it stops. Okay. So moving on from that, what we're going to do is something a little bit more ambitious. So if we create numbers in a tuple, so we'll do 10... 20, 30, 40 numbers. Okay, and then if we do while true colon try colon num equals input enter an integer, so similar to what we had just a moment before. And then we'll do actually some control flow within the try clause so eval num in numbers so remember when we put an input it's actually going to be a string so we have to convert the string into a number so in this case it's going to be an integer and we're going to try and find if we have the inputs be 10 20 30 or 40 and if it's in there, we'll print num is in number, numbers, break. So this will break the code and the while loop will end. However, if that doesn't work, then we do num equal equal quit. So we can actually break out of it as well. So we we'll put colon there, break. Make a space here too. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. And then we'll do else print not in numbers list. 
And so because it's not a numbers list, it will ask you to continue putting in a valid number until you actually get a valid number that's within this uh, tuple. Or if you put quits, and then we'll do an accept. So in case we put an invalid input, so print try again, please continue. So this will continue the while loop. And then of course we do a finally clause, print end code, and this will always run. Okay, so let's run this. Let's say put in 11, not in numbers list. Let's say put in something invalid. Some gibberish here. Try again, please. So that's referring to the accept clause. And then say I put in 20, which is in the tuples number. And then you have the end of the code. Okay, great. So just to reiterate, you can put a try accept and finally clause within a while loop and you have the inputs here and you have to of course convert the inputs which is going to be a string that we've assigned to the variable num you're going to have to convert that into a number which can be either a integer or a float and it's checking whether or not that number that we put in is within the numbers tuple and then we print it out if it's true if not, then we can have the else, or we can also do quit, so let's do quit as well. So let's say I put in something invalid like 11, and then I do quit, and then you have end code. Okay, so let's take this a little bit to uh, a bit more interesting level. So let's just delete this here. We'll do chance equals zero. And we'll get rid of the try, or rather the true, sorry. And we'll do chance less than three. So we're going to run this a maximum of three times. So we have three chances of getting the correct value that's within this numbers tuple. And what we can do is... It's very little change to the code, actually. We don't really need the finally, so I'm actually going to comment that out because it's rather annoying having the end code it doesn't really make much sense because it keeps saying end code all the time and then we're going to put in chance equals chance plus one and also for the else we have chance equals chance plus one and that should be all of it really that should be it. Okay, so we should hopefully have the running of this code where it's going to go to run a maximum of three times. So we have three chances to get the correct answer. So let's say we put in three incorrect answers. Say eight, three, and six, and there you go. So it stops after the third attempts, and all of our attempts have been wrong, of course. So we try again, let's say we put in eight, two, but this time we put in a correct one, like say 30, 30 in num is in numbers. Okay. And we could also try three, and then we'll do, let's say quits. There you go. And we could also do incorrect, and then incorrect again, and then one more time. And there you go. So. In both cases with the accept clause and also with the else, we have three chances of being able to put in the correct number that's going to be found within the tuples. All right, and then we'll just do one more. This time we're going to do a function again. And we're going to call this friends. No parameter. We'll have animals equals we don't need to put that around the parentheses. It's going to automatically be a tuple. So bird, cat, dog, cow, lamb, and say pig. And then we'll do a try clause. 
num in, whoopsie, num equals int eval. So I'm going to have an integer, and it's going to be for an input. That should be either input, and we'll just say please select a friend. Great. Okay, so what's happening here with this input, as you can probably imagine now, is that we have the input, it's going to be a string. We need to convert the string into a number, and that number has to only be an integer because we're going to be indexing this tuples of animals. And then we do within the try clause, we're going to have another try clause. So nested try clause. And we're going to have some control flow if animals num in animals print animals num and then we do accept print oopsie you did not choose a friend and then lastly, finally, we'll just do some sort of minor decoration here. It's purely aesthetic here. It's not really necessary. For pets in animals, print pets, print end loop. And then, of course, we'll do and accept. So I'm going to do the accept in the same line as the most outer try clause. Print you did not enter a valid index. And then we'll run the friends function. It looks like I made a slight error here. Oh, I forgot to put the equal sign. Except, let's just check this here. Oh, my bad. It should be in line with the the inner try clause. There we go. Okay. So let's say I put in two point zero, two point three four, three two. This should be just two. We should give us dog as the friend that we've chosen. There we go, we have dog as the output and we have the for loop of the tuple. So bird all the way down to pig and the end loop. And let's try again. Let's say we do something random like that. You did not enter a valid index. And if I were to do 100, you did not choose a friend. Okay, great. So that concludes my lecture on try, accept, and finally. I hope that's been insightful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks. Welcome to Errors, Lambda, and Loop exercise. So for task one, convert functions into Lambda expressions. What I want you to do is work with these three functions here, which are mul, salad, and inside and just convert them into their equivalent lambda functions and then you have the desired output here so for mul the first function i want 125 and then for the second function you can either have not in bol or apple these are string outputs and for the third and final function either 16 or outside a string outside and the hints are number one for two of the lambda expressions, use control flow. Number two, for the first lambda expression, set three default values. And number three, use the in statements. So moving on to the second task, handling errors with lambda and while loop. So what I want you to do is work with this while true loop. And you have these clauses here, so try and accepts and lastly finally clauses and what you need to do is put in the correct control flow 
and you're going to have the desired outputs if you put in these values. So if you put in 1, 10, and then this floats 12.12345, then you should get this output of lambda is 36, and the input value is 12. So it's going to convert the floats into an integer. Okay, and the hints for this task too are number one, use a break and continue statements, which actually I've added in the continue, but I've not put it in the break. So that's for you to decide where to put that. And then number two, use conditional operator where g val is greater than 20. So what we have here is g val greater than 20. So that's already done for you. And lastly, number three, put the completed code in a function called error and run it. So this is quite similar to what we did before in the errors lecture. So essentially you have to just put all this code once you've completed it into a function called error and then run this code. Okay, so moving on from task two to task three, and that is use for loops with lambda. So what I want you to do is work with this lambda. This might be a little bit unusual to you if you've not seen this before. This is not something that we've actually touched upon exactly, but we have done some control flow within Lambda. So what we have here is we have the parameter x and we multiply it by raising it to the power of 2 if x is greater than 5 in range 10, else 0. And that depends, of course, on the value you put in g. So if it is not greater than 5, then you will get 0. So as you can see here, for instance, if we put in 3, the g is going to be 0 all the way to 9. With this one, it's going to be 9, which is going to be, of course, multiplied by itself, which is going to be 81 all the way to 90. And the hints are, one, use a for loop with a range of zero to 10. Number two, use print and add 100 to one of the output values, which you can see here. And number three, use two plus signs. Okay, moving on from that is probably the easiest of the tasks, and that is a for loop with for loop and list comprehension. So all I want you to do is work with these two variables. One is a tuple and the other one is a list. And you want to have the desired output of this list here, where Mustafa's favorite film is Akira, all the way down to George's favorite film is The Ten Commandments. And what I want you to do is have a for loop that generates this output. And then again, the equivalent of the for loop in a list comprehension also generating this output. Okay, so this should be quite straightforward. Don't worry about the third task. It can be a little bit tricky given that we haven't really touched upon this too much, but give it a try. So all you're doing is simply using a for loop with the lambda to generate these two different types of values or these two different types of outputs rather. Okay, so give it a try. If you're not able to complete all the tasks, don't worry. I will be going over them in the next lecture for the solutions. Thank you. Welcome to Errors, Lambda, and Loops Solutions. So starting with task one, convert functions into Lambda expressions. So we're working with three different functions here, which are mul, salad, and inside. And we're going to convert them into their lambdas. Okay. So what we'll do is start with mul, and that's going to be, let's do mul equals lambda num1 equals 5. So we want 125 as the output. and We have to have default values. We'll do num2 equals 20, and then num3 equals 100. 
So these are the parameters here. Let me just simply do num1 plus num2 plus num3. And then if we just do mol, we get 125. Okay, so that's the first lambda done. And then if we move on to the second one, which is salad. So we have here, just go to the top, this bowl variable, which is a list of fruits. And I'm just going to copy and paste that into this line here, or rather this cell. And then we'll simply create salad lambda. And that's going to be x colon fruits if x in bowl else not in bowl. If I recall, we wanted either not in bowl or apple. So we can do salads, apple, fruits. And if I say, let's do mango, not in bowl. Okay, great. And now we'll lastly do the third function. I'm going to convert that into a lambda. So it's going to be inside equals lambda num, and that is num raised to the power of 2 if num in range 10 else outside. So that might have been a bit tricky. But what I wanted you to do is uh, think on your feet here and have a go at it yourself. Okay, so we do inside, let's say 4, we get 16. And if I were to do 20, we get outside. Okay, brilliant. So moving on to task 2, which is handling errors with lambda and while loop. So we've got our while true, and we have our clause, try and accept, and lastly, finally. And we want to, if I recall, yes, we have to put that in a function. All right, so what we're going to do is, firstly, it would make sense to make the actual function itself. So error, colon, while true try colon val equals int eval inputs enter an integer which you should probably recall from the previous lecture and g lambda which is what we were working with from the beginning g lambda x colon x3 I was missing a b there my bad that is x so this is the parameter x on the left hand side we're using it we're multiplying it by 3 if x greater than 10 else too low and then if g so that's g val greater than 20 colon print lambda is g val do print inputs value is val break and then if not we'll do else print no input, no output. And then we'll do except, I'll just make a line lower, except print, I'm just going to scroll down as well, try again please, continue, and finally 
print end code, then caps. And then we'll run the error function. And what we want is this output here. So enter one, try again, please, encode. So encode is just going to be output anyway, so don't have to worry too much about that. Then enter an integer, 10, try again, please. Enter an integer, 12.12345, lambda 36, input value 12. Okay, so 1, 10, and 12.12345. So 1, 10, and if I do 12.12345, lambda is 36, input value is 12. Great. Okay. So moving on from that is our third task. So what we have here is a lambda of a variable x, or rather a parameter, we're multiplying it, or rather raising it, by 2 if x is greater than 5 in range 10, else 0. So it's quite similar to what we had before above in the second task. And what we want is these two different types of outputs for our for loops. So for G9, we have the 81 all the way to 90, and with the G3, we have 0 to 9. Okay, so what we're going to do is quite simple so all we're going to do is just firstly create the actual lambda if x is greater than 5 in range 10 else 0 and then we'll do for i in range 0 to 10, or we could have just done, we could just do 10, and then print i plus 100, i plus g, 3, so this is going to create the second one. We'll do the first one in a moment. So we're going to have 0 to 9 and 100 to 109. And if we run this, great. So we get the 0 to 9. Let's just change this to 9. We should get 100 to 109, but we should also have 81 all the way to 90. Okay, bro. That's grand. Okay, so moving on from that is probably the easiest one of all and that is the full loop and list comprehension task for so we're working with this data here so i'm just going to copy and paste this so we can make use of it in a cell and of course there's no hints here the hint really is that uh, it's a desired output okay so we just run that and we'll do our we'll start with a for loop so we do opinion so that's really all it is when it comes to these films for i in range 4 because we have four individuals here Mustafa, michael callum and george with four films colon fave equals critics i plus favorite film is plus films i then of course we just do dot append fave then opinion and there you have it okay so now we want to actually create the equivalence of a list comprehension here and all we do is square brackets of course Critics I plus S favorite film is plus films I for I in range four. And there you have it. Great. 
So that concludes my lecture on errors, lambda, and loops. I hope that's been insightful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. Thanks.